What is going on fam? Upstate Blake here. Hope you're having a great day and we are getting after it, bud. Real quick before we get into the topic of today's video, just want to let you guys know if you follow any of the social media pages, I know that we've been talking about these stickers for the last couple of weeks on the second round. For anyone who missed out on the first round, I do apologize. However, the second order is finally here. Super excited about it, guys. Um, I also went out and bought a label printer that should help expedite this process, so I'm not sitting here until 10 o'clock every night hand-cutting and taping every freaking one. Well, I still have to do all that stuff by myself, but at least I got a label printer now. It should help speed up the process. On a side note, guys, yes, I do work for a living. Yes, we are in the office right now, and I don't just sit at home all day and make TikToks. It's freaking crazy. Probably blowing a lot of your minds, I know. Yes, we got more three, four, and five inch stickers of the main logo ready to go. A big shout out to Justin at Sled Star Designs. I know if you follow any of the social media pages, you've seen that we've had the new designs in the works for the last couple of weeks. Huge shout out to him for killing the new YouTube logo, getting the stickers done, as well as some crazy new designs. I'm really excited to show you guys. Loving the new YouTube design stickers. Yes, those are the size of my arms in actual life. This isn't a caricature. Okay, maybe a slight exaggeration there, but there is something new on this front. Get the drum roll going per request, a million comments. Yes, we do have the new 12-inch trailer stickers, baby. They came out mint. Guys, these will be ready to go out with the rest of them um, in the next couple of days here. Just figuring out how I'm going to package these bad boys and get them out to you so they don't get damaged. I mean, these things are no joke. They're high-quality vinyl, legit decals, good as it gets. I wouldn't let these go out the door if they weren't up to my quality standards. So just going to take these next couple of days to make sure everything is right. Make sure that the big ones are packaged properly. If that means a couple day delay, so be it. Just know that I'm working as hard as I can. I'm not going to sell faulty product. I would never do that to anybody. I care too much. It is 5, 10 p.m. I am sick of working for the day, sending my last email here. And let's go home and talk about some sled stuff. Well, guys, I did start filming this episode the other night, uh, just sitting at my desk being all boring and stuff. So figured I'd wait two days, came up to the camp. It is Friday and figured it'd be better to go over the stuff at the Upstate Garage around a couple of sleds, some toys. We just winterized the, uh, the Mastercraft the other weekend and uh, we'll go show you the shop. Normally there's not lawnmowers here. It is October still. This garage was literally built around snowmobiles. Um, we've got the drive through uh, either side. So we pull around there and then it's easy access right to the lake. Great little setup. Real quick before we get into the garage scene, guys, um, this is post recording all of it. I still want to use the clips. However, I feel like I talk in a lot of guarantees or definitives. Just reiterating quick, nothing you're about to hear is a guarantee. Even the stuff that I did hear come out of the brand engineer's mouth at the Big East, it could change tomorrow. It's just me giving my best educated guess on some of these issues, guys. I feel like it's better hearing it come from the brand engineer's mouth than some freaking keyboard warriors sitting on Facebook going, everything's delayed, blah, blah, blah. I would also hate to get a brand engineer in trouble for anything that they unintentionally said. However, I feel like there's a level of confidence there. You know, it's kind of their job. I feel like they wouldn't say anything if like their job was dependent on it. They were such good people, um, had a blast talking to them. So this is just my honest opinion on this stuff. Best educated guess I could make, just coming from one snowmobiler to another and uh, let's get into it. Don't hold me on it. Figured this would be a better backdrop, sitting in the garage where my sled will be at in a couple of months whenever it comes in. Sitting above the bathroom door is one of the first gifts I received, uh, part of our sponsorship with Woody. So hung that up there. Great little addition to the garage. I'm sure slowly but surely there'll be little things added here and there. We got a Yamaha flag right here. I'm going to have to go buy some freaking Polaris shirts, man. I'm all, I only got Yamaha stuff from the SRX I sold, which is kind of a bummer. If money was no object, I would have kept the SRX, but turns out that money is an object. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet to the bullet points that I heard at the show or from other valid sources um, regarding the Articat Catalyst information that I found out, which isn't much. The Polaris Boost and Polaris overall, you've probably seen a general theme among the snowmobile YouTubers right now. Um, everyone's just kind of giving their best educated guess. It's kind of all we can do until uh, the brands themselves come out. You know, as you guys know, stuff changes on a daily basis, especially with the Polaris information, which I'm really excited about. But I do got some good information to talk about quick. So regarding the recall, um, I cannot remember if it's, if it's just this one piece that the engineer went into depths to describe 
or if it's a couple of things, either way, the only thing I remember is him talking about this one piece. Um, confirmed, no, it's not a whole fuel tank. Thank God, that would be a logistical nightmare. Um, it turns out that there is a piece on it. I can't remember if he said washer, hose clamp, something, but it is a small metal piece that is helping cause that electric uh, static discharge. Easy peasy, uh, once you schedule your appointment with the dealer, the engineer said that the whole fix should take an hour, hour and a half tops, which is really, really good news on that front. We should be getting word from Polaris in the next couple days regarding the recall status. Um, I just was looking on Facebook today, and one of the one of the posts that I saw on the Polaris uh, Matrix owners group was um, of a 2023 with the recall already put in it. Um, I don't know if that's legit. I haven't verified it, but I just saw it and went, ooh, shiny. But that is a 2023 model. Um, it is, per the dealership, they put that post up and said that the recall is legit and already fixed. So either way, the recall stuff is looking good. The Polaris guys definitely reassured me on that front. On to some catalyst information. So not much more to elaborate on here than what was in the Big East video. If you guys have followed cat news for the last couple of years, you probably heard that uh, 900 motor in the works in the R&D that's just kind of spread through the grapevine. Um, so I really did try to get something out of the text when I was talking to them. Uh, when I brought up 850, they kind of were like, you know, laughing and smirking. And then when I brought up 900, they both kind of looked at each other and uh, what did come out of the engineer's mouth directly was, we are very confident that this is going to take the two-stroke crown back. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. Um, if you're trying to beat the leading competitors, which is Polaris and Skeeter with their 850s, you need a bigger motor. And with the rumors of the 900 in the works, I'm almost positive that it's going to be a 900 twin, which is sick because it's gonna be a brand new motor built from the ground up. They gotta fit it in the chassis first of all. I have a feeling that that's part of the reason why they didn't release it, you know. It takes a lot of money and time to build a motor, so nothing confirmed, but we're gonna see what type of motor they put in it. Back to Polaris, so if you're like me and you got that most recent Polaris update and uh, you saw that some models will be delayed till January and your heart freaking sank like mine did, uh, definitely some hope reassured at the show talking to these guys. They really went into great depths and I really started probing them on the boost. You know, as you guys know, I've got a Polaris boost ordered. So freaking excited for it. It's gonna be sitting right here in a couple of months. <laughs> but regarding some information I did find out about the boost, um, all systems are a go. Boosts are the next up on the production line and priority numero uno and a bunch of them are already built, sitting on the floor. Um, he said the ones that are sitting on the floor, a bunch of the recalls are already done. They're doing that before they even ship them out to the dealers, which is great. Again, I'm gonna. this is the last time I'm gonna say it this video. Nothing is guaranteed until we hear from the brand's mouths directly, either with a new update, but we should hear over the next couple of days um, some information regarding deliveries and our snow check statuses. Either way, he was beyond confident to tell me it's, a mid, it's looking like a mid-November delivery date, which is great. Freaking great, man. Just before the snow flies, I don't care. I, you know, obviously I would love to have it right now sitting here in the garage. I could just look at it for two and a half months. I wouldn't even get any work done, but it is what it is. Regarding the delayed model. So this is one of those things that I didn't hear at the show. Um, this is kind of just one of those grapevines, but the sources that I have are pretty legit. So I don't know anything about all of the delayed models, but I do know that it's looking like the 9R is going to be one of those models that's delayed. It's unfortunate. It's a brand new motor. I get it. I feel terrible for the mountain guys because, you know, that's pretty much a mountain only model right now. But it's one of those things that some people are going to get lucky and some people are going to get unlucky. So maybe not all of them. Just my general opinion that it's looking like the 9R is going to be one of those delayed models to start with. Some side tidbit information that I found out that I'm really excited about. It's pretty much confirmed that the 9R motor, the 900, is going to be in the XCR chassis next year. So that's some crazy news. You can tell how excited I'm getting with my rosy cheeks. That, that's, that should be pretty sick. For Flatlanders bringing a 900 two-stroke back to the trails, that would be incredible. And they already have the boost platform. So what if they came out with like a 900 turbo? I mean, just take my money now. Just take my freaking money. You can have this Yamaha shirt off my back. I'll pay for it. I promise. I'm good for it. Real note, that's really, really exciting stuff. If they bring a 900, they're already, you know, with Cat, especially with the Catalyst, if they come out with a 900 and then Polaris, you know, comes out with this 900, we're into a whole new level again of high performance two strokes, which is great. I know everyone just sees it as, oh, it's just 50 cc's. How much bigger can it be? But you know what I tell them? 
Ain't no replacement for displacement. A bigger motor is a freaking bigger motor. Of course I want an 1800cc motor thrown in these things. I want triples to come back. I would. I don't care if it's 900 pounds. If they came out with a triple two-stroke trail sled again, I would buy it, even if it was like a 440. I could care less. I The triple sound is the best thing on planet Earth. So I would definitely buy one. One thing I was pretty shocked about at the show, that just as kind of a side note here, um, is how much respect the brands have for each other. Obviously, I'm the last one to judge. I make fun of everybody on my TikToks. However, I've said this a million times. It's all in good humor. It takes a snowmobiling idiot to no one. I mean, no disrespect. I love all the snowmobile brands, and it's just to make people laugh. It's strictly for the humor point of it. I would never, you know, try to intentionally put somebody down. You know, if you're on a snowmobile, you're cool in my book. So guys, it is Friday. Um, I've, I'm going to a uh, obligation I have tonight and leaving right for Epping, New Hampshire after that. So we're doing back-to-back -back videos here. Going to be filming all weekend. Stay on the lookout for that Epping video. Should be insane. I am staying with Jason Owens. You probably saw him in the uh, Salisbury drag racing video. Staying with him for the weekend. I'm not getting in until midnight, but the stuff we do for content, man. I'm driving straight throughout the night. I'm going to get there, hang out with Jason for the weekend, hang out with Jagger. It's going to be off the charts fun no matter what happens. But I got all the cameras charged, ready to go. So stay on the lookout for that episode. As always, guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Happy to talk to you. And we will see you next video. What am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. Wee! <laughs>